Hello and welcome back. I am Elizabeth Merrick and I am here to teach you how to make a edible fondant mermaid topper. I've made this topper dozens of times, it's super popular on my Etsy account, so I thought that you guys would like to see how I make her. And this is the most popular one and I'm going to go ahead and show you all the different steps. You can fast forward or pause or whatever and um, just comment if you have a question and I'll try and answer it as soon as possible. Have fun! Okay, the first step of the mermaid tutorial is to make your base. And this is just a piece of fondant that's been rolled out, uh, added some tylos to it, and this is a popsicle stick. And I basically use this and uh, I make it and then let it sort of dry out for a little bit until it's nice and hard just so that it's easier to work with and doesn't stick. And I make several of them up at one time. And uh, I use the popsicle stick to basically hold up the mermaid. And uh, you know, this doesn't have to be solidly in there. It's more for support inside the mermaid. So I'm just going to, um, you know, just kind of leave that there for a minute. We're gonna start with the tail. You can use whatever kind of green you think looks nice. Good amount. Uh, it's easier to start off with, you know, more than you need and take that away than to, uh, you know, not have enough and have to redo it. So knead that till it's nice and smooth. Roll into a ball. Put a little bit of your Tylos water. Tylos water is just Tylos powder mixed with water and it makes kind of like a paste that's good for um, good for gluing sugar pieces together. And then we're going to roll this piece, uh, start rolling this out with our hands, making one side skinnier. And I, I actually usually do this on the table. So my left hand is basically kind of staying in the same position and the right hand is sort of drawing the fondant away into a thinner point. Looks about long enough. Just kind of look here. Uh, and the mermaid has a part of her body that she's sitting on and then her tail wraps back around her. So I'm going to kind of define where that area is just using a tool. Um, I'm just going to kind of make an indentation that tells me that, that this part of, is her torso, or I guess, I don't know, like the lower part of her torso. And this is going to be uh, her legs, and this is going to be where it curves back around. So I'm going to bend this like so, making sort of a flat spot where her body is going to be sitting. Pardon the truck bad noise background. Windows open. Um, so until you have about like like this shape. And then I'm going to take this popsicle stick or lollipop stick excuse me and just press that right up through the center. Feel where it comes out in the top. Just set that right back on there, just like that. And then we're just gonna bring the tail around. I'm bringing this to a little bit of a point so that it looks nice when we attach the fin. Make sure your lollipop stick is nice and straight up and down. Next thing I'm gonna do is take a uh, piping tip that has a, a, um, a hole in the end of it. It can be small or it can be big depending on your preference. Um, this one's a little bit smaller so I think I'm going to use this one. And we're going to use this to make some scales. And the way you make the scales is you just facing the mermaid at it sort of an angle. We're just going to press in and do a few rows of these. You see it makes sort of like a, a little U shape. 
it doesn't have to go all the way around, doesn't have to cover the whole thing. I just use it as more of like an impression, a, an idea of scales. It doesn't have to be perfect. And this is just a really easy way to, to do scales. You could do this for dragons or uh, if you were actually making a fish. Let's put some on the side of her a little bit. And she's going to have long hair, so I don't really worry about the back or the front because we're going to put a fin around her waist here. doesn't take very long. Okay. Just like that. Get a little bit of white fondant here and mix that in with a little bit of green so that the fin is lighter than the actual body. I think that just, that contrast looks nice. My fingers got, are getting a little sticky, so. The fondant, marshmallow fondant tends to get sticky if it's too soft. So I just add, a, you know, I just dip it in some Tylos powder and work that in there. And it gives it a better consistency. It's easier to work with. bit of powdered sugar down and I'm going to roll that not too thin you can see there and just for some variety instead of doing a typical thin I'm going to use this cutter which is a um, uh, what is this called I can't remember the cutter it's like a frilly flower um, my mind is going blank. But anyway, I'm just gonna cut like so. And grab my ball tool if I can find it. I've got a couple different sizes of ball tools here. I've got a, uh, a larger one and a, a smaller one. And I'm just going to soften the edge. I don't want it to be too thin because I don't want it to break but I don't want it to look like a cutout either. I'm gonna use this smaller one. If there's any residue of sugar on your ball tool, it will stick. So you gotta make sure it's nice and nice and clean. We'll ruffle that little edge a little bit. And then I'm just going to put some lines in here to make it look like a fin. Just like that. A little Tylos glue. And then we're going to just lift up our little tail. that. I'm going to tuck it in the side and roll it up a little bit so that it looks pretty. And I'm going to leave some space here for her hair. And then I'm gonna let this dry overnight and so that when we put her body on that it doesn't squish down the tail part that we've already made. So we'll just continue this on tomorrow.
Okay, welcome back. We're on day two of making our mermaid fondant topper and you can see that it's uh, nice and firm now. And um, I've got some ivory fondant rolled out here and uh, just divide it up into four pieces. This is gonna be the head, this is gonna be the body, and these two pieces are gonna be the arm. And um, I'm gonna show you how to, to make these, these pieces now. And I'm gonna start off with the body. And you know, you can see about how big, big it is in comparison. I can't give you an exact amount of fondant to use. I can just say, you know, be proportionate to however big you made your, your tail here. So uh, I'm gonna start off with a uh, pinching in the waist. The, the upper torso is bigger than the waist because you're gonna have uh, to make room for the breasts and the shoulders and the neck. And then I'm going to sort of pinch this lower torso down to make room to go onto the tail here. Continuing to pinch. And then I always make the waist way thinner than it needs to be because it sort of compresses when uh, when I put them when I put her together and to the to kind of the right spot. So we've got this shape now. Sorry if you couldn't see that. I wasn't paying attention. This is the shape that we have now. And I'm going to pinch in the neck. And then the, uh, the shoulders. So that neck and shoulders and waist. And then I'm gonna make a couple of breasts. You could add these on with a couple separate pieces of fondant, but I just pinched them in. And um, this sort of ends up looking like a Barbie torso to me. These torpedo boobs. And, um, you know, this is fondant, so it has a lot of stretchiness and give to it, and it kind of bounces back a little bit. But uh, if you used modeling chocolate, you could um, be a lot more detailed and things sort of stay where they are. So I, I tend to over-exaggerate everything in fondant and then it sort of compresses back to where it needs to be because it's stretchy okay and then I'm going to use one of my fondant tools to uh, define a clavicle and some neck de definition here. You don't have to do this. This is just what I do. Studying anatomy is a good way to understand your fondant figures better. And then I'm going to take a, uh, a lollipop stick here and just put that up through the middle and then take some Tylos glue and put some on the tail and the stick here and just slide that on make the, the neck thinner because <clears throat> I want her to have a very cute and tiny neck and as you can see that's really tall so I just pinch off the part that I don't need and just smooth on her torso area. I feel like this is a little too thick. I got a little too much extra, so I'm just gonna 
smooth that down to the point where I think it looks good and then I'm just going to cut off the extra. So I'm going to go kind of like in this, this kind of shape. Flatten these boobs down a little bit. It's a little, a little too busty. And then I'm going to uh, use just a little, little tool here and give her a little belly button. Like that. And then I'm going to use a ball tool to uh, make an area in her shoulders just like this and that's going to be how we attach the arms and you don't have to worry about a seam because her hair is going to cover that we just mostly just want a nice a nice place to put the the arm attachment so take our headpiece here and you may have seen how I do this in my uh, my um, pregnant lady uh, tutorial, but I'll just show you again. I uh, start off with um, kind of defining where the eye sockets and the chin is going to be. So kind of two spots where the, where the eye sockets and the chin is gonna be. And I just sort of take my, put my two fingers where the eye sockets are and just sort of pinch out to define the chin area and the mouth area. And then I just use my ball tool to uh, kind of define that area a little bit more. And then I'm going to pinch out where the nose is gonna be. Pinch the chin a little bit thinner here. Her face should look like a like a, a nice little oval with a pointy little chin. Define where her cheeks are. Just making sure the bridge of her nose is slender. Just define the bottom of her nose a little bit here. You could spend as much time on this as you need to. And you can, you know, even practice a few times. If you don't like the way your first one turns out, you know, squish it up and try again. I like, I like that, the way that looks there. Cute little turned up nose. Make a couple little 
nostrils here. And define the edge of the nose. going to get the top of my lollipop stick there wet and about in the center just press that on. I usually hold my fingers on the sides of her head so that um, she doesn't get deformed as I press down. And then sort of reform as needed. Make sure her head's down low enough. Remember when you're making a face, which is symmetrical, to look at it from straight on the front to make sure that your cheeks and your head, you know, is even on both sides. And then look from the side to make sure that the profile looks good. And the other side, don't have to worry so much about the back, but as long as the front and the sides look good, you're probably good. Lower these torpedo boobs. They're out of control. And then we're gonna put some little shells on those so she's not naked. And I'm not gonna put the decoration on her face until her head is dry. And that might take a few hours or you know you could do this overnight again if you felt like waiting another day but just remember that when you're doing things like this patience is key uh, unless you're using modeling chocolate which firms up pretty fast you know you, you really need to wait for the steps for each each one to dry otherwise you'll everything will just smush down as you're working I'm gonna put her little waist fin on now just got some of my leftover green everything back here so you can still see uh, see like right there just roll that out and then I'm going to flatten it slightly some little indentations and then just attach like so Now, I didn't just magically know exactly how much to put around the waist. I just am experienced and can kind of guesstimate. But if you made it too long or too short, you know, just kind of to see how much longer or how much shorter you need to make and just make a second piece. So there's her little waist Let's fin. Let's put on her arms now. 
and get the shoulder area damp. And her arm is going to be uh let's see here. I think I'm gonna put like a little rock here. Because normally her arm would be on the ground, but I've made her pretty tall. So I've made her really tall, so if I made her arm long enough to be on the ground, it might be, eh, it might be just, just a tad, tad too tall. So I'm just going to take some some gray and white here and just sort of marble it. And maybe I'll break it up into two pieces here. And just sort of make a rough little rock here. And another flat one here. Just so that she has somewhere to put her hand and it doesn't look weird. So we take our arm fondant that we have ready here. Let's give it a couple of kneads. So um, I'm going to define where the hand is first. And then start rolling out. And I just pinch thinner where the wrist and the elbow are going to be. work my way up into the shoulder upper arm area kind of see about how big we're getting and just pinch off what you don't need so we've got our hand forearm upper arm And then we're going to make the fingers. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see what I do. I'm going to make a cut where the thumb is going to be. Take that piece out. And then one, two, three, four little fingers, and then I'm going to take my fingers and gently roll each one to take away the sharpness from the cuts. And bring them back together. And then we just place that onto our figure. Want her hand to have a, a natural curve to it. So sort of bend it where the elbow would be. I also want this to be fairly close to her body. Define the hand and the wrist. the arms let's see about how long we need to be make sure that these are even
This arm is going to be on her lap. Make sure you put the thumb on the opposite side. Turn her body. Like this. So it makes more sense. Let's do some pink for her shells. It's got a little pink here. And this is super easy to do the shells. Just take a little, little bit and flatten this. And then your tool, whatever you want to use to just define some lines. And that's it. Super easy. And just put that over. Give her her little shell bra. I'm going to start adding some hair. I'm not going to finish because I want some of her hair to be to gently fall over her eyes and I'm not going to do her eyes until her head is more firm. So we're just going to kind of get things a little bit damp here to attach the hair. And this gal is going to be brunette, but you know, obviously, you could change the hair color to whatever you want. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my ivory and some brown just to give it some variation. And we're going to start with the back and the longest pieces first. And it's basically the same technique over and over again. Start out with some brown, roll out. long skinny tendrils and uh, I usually leave it thicker in the middle and it's kind of like installing like uh, hair extensions or something <laughs> that there you could do this in red or blonde and I just tend to think things look better when you vary uh, the colors 
and the widths. And I just kind of curl the ends a little bit, give it some character. And just sort of let it fall where it is. So, I think I'm going to stop about there. Maybe put one more here. I want her part to be on the left side. So, that's where I attach it to sort of create a natural part. She's got a bald spot in the back. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Last one. Just attach that right there. Make sure there's no gaps. And then after this is dried up a little bit, I'm going to um, do her face and finish the hair. Okay, the uh, mermaid has set up. Her head is pretty firm here. So I'm going to finish putting on her final touches of hair and then we're going to paint on her features with some food coloring. I'm just going to go ahead and apply some gum glue all over the, the top layer because I'm going to put some finer, thinner pieces to finish. Always remember to curl the ends so they look more natural. Going to put a little few little lines in here to define 
just the area where the part is looks a little bit more natural. Before I finish the hair, I'm going to go ahead and paint on the facial features. I'm going to use a, a really small detail brush and just some food coloring. Got some blue and some black and some white. This is a food coloring pen that I'm going to use to do her eyebrows. Apologize if you can't really see this part. Now to do the eyes, I'm going to start off with the blue, which is the scent the scent No, it looks a little funny right now. But it'll look better in a second. Then on to the black for the the eyelashes. And then we want to finish with some white highlight. This just gives life to the eyes. Just put on a few more eyelashes.
couple little indentations where the smile is. And then we're just going to finish her eyebrows. Or, I mean, not her eyebrows, her, um, her hair. And you can see why you don't want to do this part until her face is done because it kind of gets in the way. And the very last piece is a little starfish for the top of her head. I'm just going to use a little bit of yellow. And you could use a cutter for this if you wanted to. But as you've gathered by now, probably, uh, I just tend to do things by hand. It's just a little bit faster for me. Oops. And this just goes right on top of her head. A little hat. There you have it, our finished mermaid. She looks pretty cute. Ready to go on top of a cake. And like I said, you can change her colors to suit whatever you need. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tune in next time for our next tutorial. Thanks for watching.